one of the hardest things to overcome is the sense of being alone. And alone can be an illusion which drives us into habits and substance abuse. To try and escape this feeling and this sense that you're on your own. This isolation within yourself. Life does not have to be that way. Substances and alcohol and all this it's scientifically proven that they accelerate all the different parts of our psyche, as in sex drive, um, ways in which we feel go up and down, and they it disrupts all the calibration of our mind and the way in which our life works in sync between mind and body. That's why we become abusive and we make wrong decisions and perceive things the wrong way and are unable to resolve and fix things because we're too focused on habits. We lose relationships and people that we care about and just sit there filling ourselves with our medicines and co concoctions and we end up on our own. But ending up on your own isn't the natural form of being alone. That's ostracizing yourself from a community that wants you to be involved, people that want you to be involved. That's why when people whinge about being alone, nine times out of ten it's an illusion. It's all in the attitude that they have and how that can change to help them not to feel alone. Alone, man shall not be alone. It's an enemy to the nature of man. It's the greatest force that can drive man out of his mind. But you have to be able to understand yourself and live with yourself in a way in which you cannot feel alone. And I don't mean that in a negligent, um, forceful way. There has to be a way where you are at peace with yourself without the assistance of substances and alcohol and all this other stuff that is available today. There's now a new medication coming out to help people get off weed, believe it or not, along with all the Alcohol Anonymous and other Narcotics Anonymous and all these. Can't you see that these things are a ploy of the devil? Being alone is an illusion. There are people out there that want company and they would like your company if you would just present yourself in the right way. We isolate ourselves through our habits. We become hermits and become paranoid and antisocial, get all sorts of social um, dysfunctions where we won't go out and all the rest of it. It's all got to do with the way in which we treat our mind. We have to come back to having a value for our mind. And you can find your way back. That's why there's all these therapy centers and coaches and addiction places that you can go to to get help. But you might not want help. You might want to spend the next couple of decades on top of the decades that you've done destroying yourself. I don't know. I'm just offering a solution. And the solution is this sense of being alone is self-inflicted. Too often people are the victim of their own demise. And after a while, you get tired of watching it. You just get to the point where you go, it's got to, something's got to be said. These people are destroying themselves and there's no need for it. And they think it's all right. It's not all right. Particularly for the people that have tried to care for and, and, and love you. There's people that are addicted to religion. There's spiritual forms of addiction. There's sport forms of addiction. People are addicted to sport, fishing, and other stuff. Gambling. There's all these addictions. Don't worry about that. It's not just dope, weed, alcohol, amphetamines and psychedelics and all that. Oh, no. But for those that choose to go down those routes, good luck to you. You have to face the consequences of your actions. And if you're willing to do that and you're happy with that, then good luck to you. Kudos. But if you're prepared to make the effort, I mean the real live effort, to bring yourself back 
to your natural fucking God-given um, best possible attractive presentation of yourself, if you want to make that effort, you'll reap the rewards. I'm telling you, you're cursing yourself with this crap. You're putting yourself under a demonic curse. It's, it's literally before everybody's eyes. You're destroying yourself. How embarrassing for people to be standing there and going, this person's destroying themselves. They don't care about death. They don't care about themselves. Well, what makes you think they're going to care about anybody else? They don't. They usually only care about the people they're in the addictions with because they all work on a tribal, poor sense of pity, oh me, and that's what bonds them together along with their evil sarcasm and antagonism and often rejection of each other. They pull down everyone around them, they destroy everything around them and they end up sitting there with their bottle in their fucking hand like a baby with a bottle and a bong in the other no different to a baby with a bottle in its mouth. And it's pathetic. Is that being judgmental? No, it's just how it is. It's absolutely fucking pathetic. That's it. That's all there is to it. And people are doing everything they can to try and help these people wean off the shit. Some people just ain't going to. They're going to drink themselves to death. They're going to smoke themselves to death. And that'll be that. And don't you think that's selfish? It's a slow micro form of fucking suicide. It, they know that it's killing them. So should we have any sympathy? No, I don't think so. Compassion, yeah, but not sympathy. If you choose, you, you want to take that route, you take it. Religious people, if you want to stay in a cult and you all drink poison, you go ahead and do that. It's about self-awareness, self-care first, and self-preservation. Is alone being a, is it is the sense of being alone an illusion? It is if you're not looking after yourself, because you're bringing this loneliness on yourselves by way of your negligent reactions towards yourselves. The disruption of the calibration of the mind disrupts the calibration of every other faculty and organ in their, in your body and muscle and fiber in your body. You're deliberately upsetting your body. And for some of you, it's driven by the sense of being alone. But you put yourself there in a place where you do feel alone because of the things that you do. You've got to grow. You've got to come back to yourself and look at yourself, take a good hard look at yourself in the fucking mirror and start growing up. Because you're not living your best life. You think you are, but you're not. You're going to be sick. You're going to be ill. You're going to lose relationships, waste money. Um, have nothing, get nowhere. These are all predictable consequences of these type of habitual behaviours. There's been generations go before you that proved it hasn't and it doesn't work. How important are you to yourself? What would you do to find your way back to yourself? What would you do? Well, the people you put yourself in the company of, that's how you were going to turn out 95% of the time. And if somebody's come into your life that was willing to love you and was straight and all the rest of it and you've taken that for granted, I think you've just about given yourself a death sentence. You want those habits to take you out and that's why you end up on your own people can't tolerate it and if you find somebody like yourself that's just going to accelerate your joint journey to sickness and illness that's what these people do they can't fix anything they can't resolve anything they're fucking half asleep half the time. They're devious, deceitful, sarcastic, antagonistic. They backbite when you're not around. They undermine. 
they do wrong things because of resentment and shit. They don't know how to fix their resentments and bitternesses. So they punish the person with with um, passive-aggressive, uh, micro-incremental, dark triad character traits and forms of punishment. And they end up on their own, alone. But being alone is an illusion. And we're the victims of our own demise. We have to come back to ourselves. When you come back to yourselves, you put yourself in a situation where you can have somebody as company that's going to help you to heal, to mend, to have power and to find yourself. But too many people have lost the sacred art and powers of relationship to bring healing. That don't you can't you see that's the devil's greatest trick? To use a relationship for the destruction of people instead of the benefit of people? Do you know how much harm comes out of broken relationships? Some people never recover. Go to the mental home and just have a look. Most people are in there because some somebody somewhere along the line has hurt them through relationship, be it their fault or not. It was the relationship related. A lot of these drug and alcoholic people are through being hurt in some way or another by a human, in one way or another. You can come back to yourself if that's what you choose to do. If you don't choose to do it, then... That's your business. But everything is available to you to find your way back. You can come back to yourself bit by bit. It's not going to be easy. Nothing's easy that's got the great rewards. The trophy at the end of the line of the 100-metre sprint, that it takes years and years. And not everybody gets the trophy. Only one, the one that wins. Your race is against yourself and the clock. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every single person right now that comes across this video on alone is an illusion. It's an illusion that you've brought on yourselves. And God wants to bring that out of you and away from you because man's not meant to be alone. People aren't meant to be alone. Equip us, Lord, to be the best that we can be in our relationships. And help us, Lord, not to lose any more of the people that are close to us through the victim being the victims of our own demise. Holy Spirit, strengthen us and lead us and guide us. In Jesus' name, amen.